Hi friends, welcome back. So we've got some more drama in the Tesla stock land and uh, also to a question from the member of the community. So I wanna jump right in and let's uh, answer the question here. Uh, this is coming from Maniac Gear just 18 hours ago. The person asks, you've seen the Cybertruck. Are we still not considering that maybe they deserve to be fired? And I wrote, I'll make a video about this. And essentially from how I read this question and the contents of my past uh, video from yesterday, um, I was talking about how Elon is firing yet more people. And I think this person's implying, well, if those people designed the uh, Cybertruck, then they got to be fired, right? <laughs> I think that's how that question is implying it. And um, this is sort of a good topic because I always emphasize you guys to read everything, hang out on this channel, hang out in this community because we look at as much stuff as we can and we share ideas of these things. And I also want to make sure that you see uh, all of the facts. It's something that the Tesla pumper channels don't show you. Um, this is the example of this. So if you see this article back from um, July in 2023, the title of the article is Tesla Cybertruck Didn't Always Look So Cyberpunk. And I'll give you a short version, then we'll go through details. Basically, Elon Musk was heavily involved in the design of the Cybertruck, and he was really largely responsible for the way that it looks. Uh, he wanted to push for a sci-fi kind of thing. Um, and so it's actually really ironic that this person's like, wow, you got to fire all those people designed, you know, who designed a Cybertruck and they're so, you know, terrible and stuff like that, trying to sort of back Elon Musk. But basically you're ignoring the facts and what we know about the situation, right? If, if you do believe in this stuff, then you should be thinking, well, we should fire Elon Musk. <laughs> and I know that person may or may not watch this video, but um, I just want to point that out because I, I do my best to tell you guys the truth about this stuff. Um, this is actually really interesting. If you look at this photo, and this is coming from the book here, uh, it shows sort of the different iterations that they had of the Cybertruck. Um, it shows the influences. There's like Robocop is in this thing. Um, uh, Cyberpunk, the video game is in this thing, right? You guys can see some of the more of the details of these photos. Um, and, and also too, I'll, I'll leave the, the video image up here. If you guys recognize other stuff in here, please let me know. Uh, I see the DeLorean from Back to the Future is also an inspiration. I'm not quite sure what this anime pictures of this kind of crazy person. I, I just don't know, my mouse is over there. I just don't know what, what they're referring to there. Um, but uh, they definitely went for a futuristic design. I, I, I can see that. Um, it was definitely a bold choice, right? Um, this one here, like a motorcycle in the desert. I guess that must be cyberpunk also perhaps. There's Tron light cycles. Again, these are the inspirations from, and there's Robocop again. <laughs> uh, if you don't know Robocop, that's an old movie from the, from the 80s. Um, you, you may not know, Elon Musk and I are about the same age. Went to the same school, University of Pennsylvania. Um, you also may not know, I was a professor. I used to teach at the top design school uh, in Korea. I also taught at the top advertising school in Korea. So uh, these these are the kind of things that we talk about in my class all the time, is, is where do you come up with designs? What are your inspirations? And this is a, a typical exercise that, that you do for anyone in this space. And occasionally there, there are always people out there who say, oh, Chris, you're so dumb. You just teach design and that kind of thing. It's like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> and I also teach business, entrepreneurship, and, and money, right, finance. I teach a lot of different kind of things. Um, I, I, I literally think this is part of business, uh, especially this kind of stuff. And, and this is even in uh, the book here. This is according to Isaacson. I'll read this right here. And this is, again, I want you guys to look at everything. It says, according to Isaacson, Musk personally pushed for a less conventional design, even if that meant potentially putting off some customers. He reports that Musk had been talked out of taking a similarly radical design for the Model Y, meaning that Musk wanted to do you know, crazy Cybertruck kind of stuff for the Model Y, but people are like, nah, maybe not. Let's not, don't do it, Musk. You know, you're, you're going to lose out in business. Um, and you can see here, which has suddenly begun to become a bestseller, but wouldn't back down when it came to Tesla's first pickup truck, right? Quote, I want the future to look like the future, Musk reportedly said, and quote, we're not doing a traditional boring truck. We can always do that later. <laughs> I want to build something that's cool, uh, like don't resist me, right? And, and it doesn't, like when you read these quotes and you kind of know about Musk, it, it doesn't sound too far-fetched that, you know, the CEO of the company is like, you know, I really want to make a bold step, which he did, right? Um, whether got, you like the Cybertruck or not, he made a bold step, right? And and I guess it wanted to be like a tank. <laughs> this, this is, these are the inspirations, like a tank. Um, I guess that's would be a fighter jet, right? They wanted to be like, I'm not sure what this black car is in the corner. And again, for those of you who, you know, know all of these images, you can let me know which ones I, I missed. I'm not sure where this one comes from. This is like some sort of uh, vehicle with red um, red windows. I, I just don't know what movie or, or you know where they're getting that. I, a lot of DeLorean pictures. This is another one here. That might be from the Blade Runner movie, perhaps, I think. I have a feeling that's what that's from, this one right here. Um, the newer Blade Runner movie, because I, I remember those, that first scene where he lands down. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, there's another tank. <laughs> so the so the inspirations are really like you know this kind of stuff. Um, and and it, it is funny. And, and guys, I, I try to go over everything because and there's another one the underwater Delorean, right? So these are the things. But you know, this is when this is when it's important to read through everything because if you only read and watch the Pumper channels, they they skip over that kind of stuff, right? They'll be like, oh yeah, you're right. Elon's always a genius. He's always awesome. You know, but 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 maybe the Cybertruck was a fail. Okay, maybe not so great. But you should fire all those people because Elon's smart, right? And it's just like. Well, like how, how does that change your world when you find out that Elon was like heavily involved in the, in the design and the, in the decision making of making the Cybertruck the way that it is? It probably screws up your whole worldview. And then you need to basically just do this. La, 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 right. That's that's your typical Tesla <laughs> fanboy. Um, there's another one. Here's another example. So um, this is Herbert Long. He's one of the fanboys out there. And he's like telling, hey, guys, look how awesome, you know, the the the, the Tesla semi is going to be awesome. And he's like, this is part of what he writes here. He says, PepsiCo's current fleet of 21 it's not that many. 21 electric semis from Tesla exceed expectations last year, prompting the company to expand its fleet to for an additional 50 trucks. And you know, he's writing it's like, oh my god, it's so awesome, guys. You know, they're, they're making 21 semis, now they got 50. And then and then they suddenly you jump up to these numbers, he's like, you know, this is what he's writing here. Tesla's aiming for high scale production, targeting an eventual capacity of 50,000 a year. Oh my god. <laughs> and he shows you pictures and stuff like that. So, like, if you only read the pumpers, you'd be like, oh, okay, okay. I guess I guess we can go from 20 trucks to 50,000 a year, like or even 50. I'd be generous. Okay, I guess we can go from 50 trucks to 50,000 a year really easy, right? That's like, it's weird. I, you know, the audience that you're, that you're speaking to, I guess, don't read anything or new to, to to you know business or new to all this stuff, and just think that that's so easy to ramp up. And you know, guys, if you actually take the time to read this stuff, this is sort of why I, why I do these things with you. I want you to understand. That I I look at everything. That's what you want to do. So this is the article where he's getting this information or, or part of it. This is a part of the pressure of the release. PepsiCo to expand EV fleet in California with Tesla semis, right? And also Ford vans. So he didn't, he left that part out. And um, it's interesting because I guess um, te- uh, Pepsi first wanted a hundred semis backed in 2017. It's like a long time ago. It was like, what, seven years ago? And then, and then Tesla's only done like 36 out of a hundred of these things. <laughs> and, and here's the key line, guys. This is why you read everything. Listen to this, okay? Please listen to this. Pepsi said it is partly funding the expansion with a grant provided by the California Air Resources Board, the San uh, Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, and the California Energy Commission, right? You guys you guys understand like why Tesla's doing this stuff and why Pepsi's doing this stuff. That there, There's money there from the government. Like, make no mistake. It's literally written right here. It's like, because I, I, you know, whether or not this stuff would go through without government funding, I, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, I, I would just say this: a lot of these EV stuff is, is, is subsidized by the, by the government. I literally see it right there. It's in black and white. You know, moreover, there are other companies involved, and it's kind of funny because, like, you know, you can brag about Tesla and stuff like that, but here it says, um, you know, that uh, I guess Teslas are going to have 50 Class 8 Tesla semi trucks, and then you got four, uh, 75 Ford E Trans electric vans. So actually, Ford is making more. Uh, vehicles in this particular article even though that the headlines get get the tesla right it, which is kind of funny so and then i guess they're going to try to go to zero emissions by uh, year 2040 that's that's the goal so i'm not i'm not against zero emissions i got no problem with that and i got no problem with electric vehicles uh and, and, and for whatever reason people who watch my channel and, and they love tesla they just think i hate electric vehicles <laughs> it's, not, it's not the case i don't have the, like a particular problem with it. i just the problem i have is is when people give you half truths or, or frankly really really misleading stuff i just show you everything like you can see it all right, right there in, in, in black and white. Um, the other thing is too, is which is I think is interesting is, is for some of these uh, Tesla pumpers, uh, Warren Reddick, Reddick is, is, was one of the the biggest pumpers throughout the last few years. Um, so he doesn't really make YouTube videos that much anymore, and, and I think he basically just took a break. <laughs> it's like you know what I, I don't want to do it anymore. But you can ask him exactly what his feelings are on this stuff. But uh, he um, recently tweeted out. This is just May 20, 2024. Uh, this is from Warren, one of the big Tesla pumpers. He says. Uh, I just sold 20% of my Tesla stock. Hated to do it. Oh no, Warren, you're letting me down, buddy. And, and this is an interesting thing because, you know, for any of these people out there, and this is this anyone, it, it, it's when it comes down to your real money and your actual situation, depending how much money you have in said thing, like you got to take this stuff seriously, right? Now, some people that are like, oh, I'm going to go down with the ship. <laughs> some people think that way and then they go down with the ship, right? Um, again, it depends, all depends how much money you have in this stuff. Uh, also depends how much you, you're you know willing to to manage risk so in warren's case he actually wrote uh, five things i thought were interesting he says this is significant risk number one shareholders vote no on the compensation package okay what was on the risk again this is coming from one of the pumpers two 
This would be correctly seen as a vote of no confidence in Elon. Three, Elon is likely to leave if it happens. Hey. Four, if Elon leaves, the AI team leaves quickly. The dream is dead. The stock collapses and the company never recovers. And five, there's not much upside in a yes vote. So it's interesting when, when this is again, one of the pumper people. Um, it's interesting when Warren you know, writing this stuff and um, you know, why not just sell all your stock? Because it, it, it's, I mean, and, and to be fair to, to, to Warren, you know, you could still hold some um, it, and it's hard. It's hard for these kind of people if they've been pumping you for the last three or four years and you build your fan base on this stuff and everyone likes you because you love Tesla and you love Elon to, to suddenly have to tell people the truth. Um, now, to, to be fair to Warren, he could have kept it silent, right? And not mentioned that he sold it all. The problem is that just conscious wise for a lot of these kind of people, it does eat at your soul. Just imagine like day after day after day, you have to pump some nonsense and you don't even hold said thing and you yourself sold, you know, months ago. Uh, but some people do that and they have no conscience. Some people do. So I, I give kudos to, to Warren here for at least, you know, saying this. And, and you know, I can see his sell order here. Yes, you can make anything up. I'm doing perfectly frank. You can make, you can Photoshop, you can make anything up in, the, in this world. But we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll just accept that this is probably true. We don't know how much he sold, but well, I'll, just, I'll just take him at his word in this particular one. Um, and it's funny, the um, sort of put pumpers were pushing back. Uh, this is the, the boomer mama person's like, why 20% if you really think this? I thought about selling more, couldn't do it. And I don't know why, you know, what else? Who knows why? Uh, no chance Elon walks in a no vote. The panic is silly. No chance. And then people are fighting. And then, uh, you know, the, the other thing I thought was kind of interesting um, is that when, when this person is pushing back, this is the boomer mom person. I showed you guys this before, but I just want to show you guys everything. She's included in the recent Tesla SEC filings. Like this is these, these are SEC filings that Tesla's made recently. This was like on, I think it was May 16th or something like that. Um, and they're including her post in here. It, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, right? Now, I uh, to be fair to Warren, I haven't seen Warren mentioned in any of the SEC filings, um, not yet at least. But you know, who knows? Um, and and this is part of the game that that. And, and I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. Why I dislike a lot of these people so much, and why I, I, I dislike sort of what's happening with this is that, guys, if 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 you know you were pumping crypto and stuff like that, be the FTX influence, etc at least to be fair to them, they did disclose that they were being paid. They didn't say how much, but they said, hey, basically they, they put it like a little check mark thing on, on Google, YouTube, and, and then the channel will will, will pop up as saying, you know, this is paid content. They will say FTX, blah, blah, blah. And, and it was it was kind of obvious they were running a 30 second spot, right? Um, the thing with what's going on with over at, with the Tesla pumpers and stock promoters on, on Twitter is it's not really clear that they are stock promoters unless you follow my channel where I've been exposing this stuff. Plus, if you have, if, if, unless you looked at the SEC filings, which also basically shows that we don't, we still, we don't know exactly how much money is being changed hands. I've showed before, though, we do know that they do receive money on, on Twitter slash X. Uh, it, it is, it is a thing. And, and it's, and someone mentioned in the comments recently, like, is this, is this against the law where you have a CEO of one company using his other company to advertise through social media people <laughs> to promote this other company? And, because I want to show you guys this. Um, this is also on uh, Twitter slash X. This is Tesla's uh, official like you know account page, and um, they're like, hey, you know, we want you to vote for Elon's pay because Elon is awesome. And they even made like this whole commercial thing. And you guys know that they have a PR firm on Retainer, right? Um, and and it wasn't disclosed how much money they're paying the PR firm, but they're you know making commercials for Elon being awesome and why you should pay him a whole bunch. And it was kind of funny because um, someone actually wrote a comment says here, and just from Neil says. Uh, why have I seen more ads about the shareholder vote than I have about the company's actual products? If this vote fails, you have only yourself, CEO, and board to blame. And, and I think this really captures what's wrong over at Tesla these days is like they're focused on selling you to vote for Elon's pay, uh, not necessarily focused on producing good products or, or you know, selling you that said products. We're just talking about Elon's pay. It's such a weird thing. Uh, and if you guys don't find that strange, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it, it's it's weird. It, the whole thing is is weird, but it is fun to talk about. Um, the other thing too I want to mention as well, um, you know, what's going on with Elon's products, etc. So this is something one of the pumpers were, were tweeting out uh, recently. Uh, this is actually, at least according to what I can tell, the early design of the um, Tesla Robo Taxi thing. Uh, I guess this is these. They call okay. This here. This says this person says Cyber Cab. Uh, Interior, maybe they called the cyber cab. Maybe um, it's not a bad name, I guess. Our first look at the Tesla Robotaxi interior, no steering wheel, two seat tax, uh, two seat cab. 
what stood out to me with this, what I thought was weird. Um, the, okay, one, it only has two seats. So that means I, it implies it's going to be really small. The other thing is, too, I don't really see any leg room in this thing. And I, you can actually kind of see, it looks, they have like pictures of a car on the left side over there. Um, but I, I, I find this, I find it really strange that they're going this, this route. I mean, it's maybe going to be a golf cart, that kind of thing. That's sort of what I'm thinking. Um, would this be suitable for freeway or only suitable for suburbs or whatever? Uh, you know, I read, I, and this is the design, I guess, according, and it, it looks, it all looks pretty legit to me from what I can tell. And I, I can't verify this, but I'm just saying, so what the official pumper Sawyer was tweeting this out. So, um, retweeting, I should say, but like I said, it looks legitimate to me. Um, but I, I, I was saying, um, when I was looking at this stuff earlier, um, my understanding of it, they're, they're going to try to test it in China. I can say try, well, you know, who knows how far along, wherever the stuff, but it's not actually in the busiest sections of the, of the city. It's only in like a small section of the suburbs of Beijing and, and Shanghai. I reread re that before. None of the pumpers talk about this stuff. Like, like whenever they say, oh, the test in China, they, they kind of give the, you know, uh, sort of impression that that's going to be widespread testing. Um, how far they are at the designs. This looks pretty early to me. Um, they're going to slap something together very quickly, play some fancy music and try to pump the stock on August 8th. Uh, I, I, I just not seeing this stuff. I don't think there's going to be much demand for like a, a cyber cab taxi thing. Um, if you guys disagree, you, you can let me know. And for those of you who are in the pumper land, and I always say, pose the same two questions. Um, have you been to China? Do you speak Chinese? And if not, why are you so confident that a Chinese consumer that you know nothing about is going to go for something like this? <laughs> That's a question I pose. I think it's a legitimate question. Um, and, you know, for me, I, I, I think there's going to be limited use cases for this kind of stuff, especially in the near term. And plus, uh, moreover, my understanding is Tesla's only level two at autonomy. Uh, you need level five to really, you know, uh, get these things to roll out. So I, I just think you're completely in pipe dream land. And, you know, we're going to see, I, I, I like tracking this story because I think it's interesting to see what happens with the vote and sort of, you know, what happens among the Tesla pumpers as they're slowly being, um, you know, included in their SEC filings of Tesla. So anyway, please share your thoughts and stuff. Um, you know, you can talk about the Cybertruck. Uh, design was, was, you know, steered by Elon Musk. This is the recent uh, designs, I guess, coming out from the cyber taxi, cyber cab thing. And also too, you know, guys, what do you think about the one of the big pumpers selling 20% of his stock and, and the warning that he gave? So thanks again for everyone and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video.